Hello, everybody. It's Dean here, and I am with Gabriella. I can't say it, Gabriella. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I practiced beforehand. Gabriella, you're based in Italy, and you're working for Department 22, which is a sustainability uh, circular economy business. And you're going, maybe you're going, what is that? We're going to dig into that. We're going to find out what it is and how it applies to us all, really. We should all be in a a circular economy model. So, Gabriella, apologies, I can't pronounce your surname. I'm a That's Luddite. Fine. I'm a Luddite <laughs> Brit. Um, thanks for coming on. Um, do you want to say Thank a little you. bit about Department 22 and what you're doing with Department 22? I am actually doing an internship for them for a little time. And uh, Department Department 22 is, um, you know, provides services and helps uh, other businesses to go to go more sustainable and uh, to transit to a circular economy. And um, well, specifically, we are helping the food sector to be more sustainable. Okay, so circular economy, for for anybody who doesn't know it, how would you describe the circular economy? What is the circular economy? Well, the circular economy is um, a, a new model of economy where, uh, you know, as um, in opposition to the linear economy, which is the current system, the, the word waste uh, doesn't exist. So everything is produced and then reused. So would that include like recycling as well as, as repurposing? So well, uh, recycling actually is, um, you know, is the last, uh, is the last option in the circular okay. economy because recycling involves the creation of new materials. So it's not really what the circular economy is about. So, so it's, it's things like businesses designing. Well, let me give you an example, a business that has a lot of product waste, they could use that waste to make another product. Yes, make, exactly. Yep. It's more about the, uh, you know, to reuse things that already exist. How does that work for a business? What are the kind of things that you're doing with clients to help them transition to this kind of circular economy model i work you know from for a little time and uh, but uh, you know the main product that we are offering is um, you know is called rice and um, it's a product where we can um, both motivate uh, all of the team and uh, you know to go more sustainable and we provide uh, and we research what what resources we can find in, in that exact business and um, how, uh, you know, um, in, from which aspects it, uh, you know, this, uh, the circular uh, economy can really work uh, for them and mm -hmm. uh, that actually, you know, can make them thrive. So when you're getting this, you know, I, I'm totally with you in the sense of if we can design our businesses to not produce waste. Mm -hmm. That's got to be a no-brainer idea for the business, but it's also brilliant for the, the environment, for dealing with climate change and all, all of that stuff. How do you get that message out there? Because it's so easy for us all to just keep doing what we're doing and almost, mm -hmm. uh, as we would say, tinker at the corners. So you, you cut down on something, but you don't really stop something so we we reduce our waste we reduce our energy we you know switch from traditional halogen to led lights things like that but how do you get the message out there that it's it's beneficial to go and redo the whole thing so we are trying first of all to raise awareness through the, the, um, you know spreading information and researching ourselves uh, you know some uh, more sensible topics and um it is uh, a big challenge. I won't. Uh, I won't hide it. And um, also, it's difficult to get clients because, as you said, it's much more easier to continue doing what you did. But the thing is that uh, customers want, uh, you know, want green alternatives, and they want, uh, you know, for the businesses to provide them. So um, uh, we are actually. We do believe that uh, what we offer is not, you know. Uh, only an ideal thing and you know something uh, you just can be proud of and that's all you can actually uh, thrive with this and uh, we try to combine uh, both these things together so it's not just about being good to the environment it's actually you're showing people how adopting this way of working choosing that waste doesn't happen anymore mm-hmm 
is actually good business sense, as in business sense. <laughs> Absolutely, because, uh, you know, uh, it's very hard to gain the trust of customers nowadays. And uh, uh, we believe, and we actually have a proof that uh, you can gain it this way. And, uh, you know, you can really build uh, um, a community of uh, of customers which are very loyal you're obviously based in italy the company's based in the uk do you have an office in italy or are you kind of working have you been working from home i've been uh, working from home and actually this is the first you know um uh, real work i do but okay. uh, i am yes because i'm finishing university so how have you found working remotely because um i get this is obviously you're an internship and all of that kind of stuff but Given the distance, the pandemic, all of that stuff, how have you found it in yourself and how have you found the comms of working together remotely? Well, I found actually, I found it great because not only, you know, the people that work, the other people that work in Department 22, they're great people, they're really gentle and kind, they're wonderful. But also, you know, I actually had to go to the UK before the pandemic, but of course I couldn't anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think this way I really can dive in, you know, full time without, you know, having, uh, you know, troubles with, uh, you know, the new reality I could mm -hmm. have went through. So actually I am trying to see the positive side of it and it's fine for me. So I've got to ask you with you being in Italy, um, how is Italy now coming out of the pandemic? Has it started to get back to normal? Does it feel normal yeah. yet? Yeah, actually, uh, from we now from some days uh, we can move freely. Uh, only we have to put the mask on. This is mandatory, but we can actually go also in restaurants and things like that. So we don't have, uh, you know, we have very very few new uh, new COVID uh, contaminates. But uh, for the rest, we are, you know, much, much better than um, we were, you know, two months ago. Yeah. And how long have you had the kind of restrictions lifted? Well, I think um, I, yes, as I, for, yes, from uh, intuition, I think it was uh, uh, three months. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we really stayed in, in, at home. We couldn't go out. So in uh, like... I've seen in UK and also in Germany, you can actually go out, but here you, you know, they, they uh, give you a fine and uh, also, you, you know. You weren't out for exercise at all, were you? No, I, I, were, I did workouts at home because <laughs> I couldn't. But actually, for, you know, for jogging, you could uh, go out, uh, but uh, yes, alone uh, without. And now, without and now restaurants are open. Um, yes, of course, we have restrictions as um, everywhere, I think. But uh, yeah, I think it's coming back to normal. And I think uh, and I hope, you know, uh, not to to step back again. Yeah, I'm really well, hopeful. Well, we're, we're all a little bit worried about is there another spike of this? Mm. Uh, yes. I really hope there isn't. But um I think we all have to take responsibility for making sure that doesn't happen, don't we? We can't really. Yes. It's yeah. it's all of us going. Do you know what? Uh, it's uh, it's. Hmm. I'm going to say it's actually quite hard to mentally remember to keep yourself two meters apart. Yes. Do you not find when you meet people you naturally, and then you forget yourself and you go oh and move back again. It's really difficult. It is. Um, also because, you know, uh, staying alone for three months, you just can't wait to meet new people, but you can't even, you know, yeah, yeah get it's, close um, to them. It, it all feels a bit formal. <laughs> yes. <Hello>. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is. So how long, how long is your internship with Department 22? Actually, almost three weeks. Okay. So you've been with them for three weeks? Yes. Uh, I actually, and, yeah, I have been in contact for that. Uh, with them you know from the start of a pandemic but w w actually working for yeah almost three weeks uh, and is it a year you're planning to do a few months what's that uh four months i have to do with them as an internship then we we can see okay and is your plan to come over to the uk or stay out well, in Italy? i would love to but 
I say difficult, not <laughs> only for the COVID, but also Brexit. I don't know if there will be, you know, COVID and Brexit mixed. I don't know if it will be more complicated than it is. One of the things that I'm confident about with Brexit is that it won't be a pull up the drawbridge because we need talent. We need people coming in. There's, mm. there's, you know, we've got we've got some work to do to recover from this. I'm going to ask you about that and how you see things working and what you've observed in terms of how you think people will recover from this. But I think we will recover. Mm. Uh, when? I'm not sure. Yes. But, it, but hopefully mid next year, things will start to feel a bit like they did before. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we'll pull up the drawbridge. I, I just don't think that that's... Uh, I don't think that's, you know, a small minority of people go, oh, let's, you know, we're a country, let's pull up the drawbridge, let's be our own country and isolate from everybody else. But we actually need people to come to our country. We need people to come and fill the jobs. There's jobs that we don't have the skill sets to do here. So from my point of view, you are very welcome to come to the UK. So how do you see, from your experience of what you've had so far and what you're seeing in Italy, how do you see businesses recovering from this? Do you think it'll be quick, slow? Uh, I'm not holding to you, you to anything, but what do you see it looking like over the next six months? Well, of course, it depends on um, on the businesses, I, I think. Of course, uh, like also thinking from a perspective, from a point of view of Department 22, for us, it might be a big challenge anyways, because, you know, uh, especially in the food sector, uh, that you know, the food sector suff suffered a lot. Uh, it would be, you know, difficult that uh, clients would want to work on sustainability when they don't have maybe the funds for, you know, pay paying for the, their employees. Mm -hmm. So um, for the food sector, I think it might be, you know, much more difficult than uh, for other businesses. But yeah, maybe... The, those who can work from home are always more privileged than uh, those who have to, you know, deal with people out from their outside from their homes as the food sector. You know, the food sector's had a very mixed impact in this process because your supermarkets have, have had record trading. Mm. Yes, supermarkets. And then your restaurants have been absolutely devastated. Mm -hmm. um, even the ones that have gone into takeaway services and home delivery services are still not seeing those results. Uh, and I guess what you've got is a scenario where you've got supermarkets going, we've just got to get stuff on the shelves, you, you know, like a, almost like a panic, like uh, over here, they said the supermarkets are dealing uh, at, the, at the worst point of lockdown here. The supermarkets were saying, this is like Christmas shopping every day. Mm -hmm. You know, people rushing to the supermarkets to stock up and yes. they were running out of things that, you know, I, I had a existential crisis because there was no pasta on the shelves. Um, so, you know, you've seen that where, you know, supermarkets are just panicking. And we've actually seen a lot of new brands on the shelves in supermarkets where they've ran out of their, their you know, the usual brands that they would have. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got the restaurants where literally they've got to figure out how they start again. It's tough. And uh, we've just seen a, um, a well-known restaurant chain who's closing 200 restaurants. Um, mm. So it, so it is going to be, I think, a very mixed situation for, yes. for the next. Well, in the UK, from what I've read, 40% uh, of restaurants are going to close. And uh, I think that... that uh, percentage will really actually you know be similar in all the countries and that's almost half of them yeah and and in europe you have very much a more what we would call a cafe culture where you would just go go out more regularly even if it was just for a coffee we, mm -hmm. we don't have that so much but all of these businesses are going to have to adapt if they want to be through this mm -hmm. and i guess yeah. that's where from your side at Department 22, helping some of those bigger brands to think how can we re-eliminate waste might have a financial benefit. 
Yeah, so also from a packaging point of view, maybe because actually it was a shortage. There was a shortage of package in this uh, quarantine because I think of everyone that transited to the takeaways. It's an unknown time. So mm -hmm. we can't end on a on a on a kind of a low note. So what are you excited about for the next year? I am excited about uh, the thing that customers want uh, want to make a change to also because you know the COVID-19 has to deal uh, with, uh, a cli with a climate change um, and uh, with actually uh, you know the destruction of the habitats of so many animals and uh, which uh, is caused by agriculture and by the food industry too so um, the fact that they want this change I really am excited for this because businesses will want to to do this change too at least I hope so well it gives them an opportunity to re-examine things doesn't it mm -hmm. it does give people a chance to go we may have done it this way for as long as we can remember but we don't have to do it this way as people restart as people uh, look at how they're doing things there's loads of businesses and this is a kind of there's loads of businesses that are going, why did we need this big office again? Mm. Um, and, yes. there's, you know, there's, I, I read about um, a major financial institution that has something like 20,000 people and they've got, well, do you know what? A lot of them can work from home. Some key employees have to work from an office for security and all that kind of stuff. But that that same thinking can move through everything through supply chains through businesses and go why do we need to do it this way um so i think i think that will be interesting i think it creates a lot more opportunities that people's perceptions of what can happen can, might mm -hmm. might be able to change or what they thought i know i know when we started remote working i, I was really going i'm not sure how this is going to work and there were challenges, but actually I got a lot more done because nobody could just wander over to my desk and and just ask things or somebody come in and chit chat. So I just plowed on. That's great. So I, so I think I think there are I think there are opportunities. I think, you know, some people are naturally going to have a tough time, mm -hmm. but but we're the human race and we're good at adapting to things. We're good at it will make it. It will innovative. make us stronger. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so, uh, no, this has been fascinating to hear about Department 22 and uh, particularly your encounter in terms of working remotely internship during lockdown has been fascinating. And that there is, for me, there is an opportunity and a financial benefit to being um, sustainable as a business. Mm -hmm. um, whilst most people are thinking about sustainable as in how do I exist right now? They have the opportunity to go, how do I make sure that my impact as a business is neutral? I don't do any damage to the environment. And that's that's something we all need to look at all the time. I'm, I, you know, we'll, we recycle everything, but it was interesting you saying recycling is the last resort. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really interesting. It is. I think actually, you know, uh, information about this is not really accurate all the time. People think to know a lot of things about sustainability, but some information is not that accurate. Also about, you know, today we published an article about uh, compostable packaging, which can seem, you know, uh, the best solution ever, but there are a lot of problems with it. And if people, for example, won't throw the sustainable compostable packaging in the right bin, it uh, it would actually make all the problem worse. Oh. So um, yeah, I would recommend uh, to follow us because we really try to research and to be to you know bring accurate information to everyone. Um, uh, where did you publish that article today? Is it on your website? On your LinkedIn? Yes, yes, we published it on the um, CAO um, page, Claire Brass, okay. and then uh, we shared it on our page. Okay. Well, I'll share the links somewhere here. This has been really, really interesting. Uh, and I think sustainability, I mean, so sustainability is a massive 
thing that more and more businesses, it's not something that big businesses do. It is something okay. that every business does. And you're right in what you say. Customers, clients want to work with people who are taking deliberate effort to reduce their impact on the environment. Yes. Um, and in some and cases, it is now a deciding factor, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, if you want actually, you know, to, uh, to you know, predict the future and to be uh, ahead of the others, I think you have to do it because at a certain point, you, there will be no choices because we can't go that much farther with our current system, food system. So, mm. Awesome. So, uh, Gabriella, thank you for coming on. Thank, thank you, you very for much. Giving me this chance to interview. I'm going to share Gabriella's details here and the article and everything that, that we put on there. Um, it's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoy your internship. Thank I you. do hope you get to the UK because I think um, uh, having people who are passionate about the environment, sustainability in the country is a good thing. And we'd love to steal you from Italy. So uh, thank you, Gabriella. Would, thank you very awesome. much, Dean. If you've liked this video, please do subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching the channel. There's some other videos you can watch uh, all about helping you grow your business, help you think a bit differently so that you can grow your business successfully. Uh, thanks for watching.